it's that time again where I take a break from the pure analysis, look at more tips and tricks and useful things that I've seen pros do that you can implement as well. The first thing's going to be taking this mid brackets control. A lot of you probably know a jungle smoke similar to this one, or even worse, you've thrown on the fly. And this smoke might look good because it covers off the entrance, but in fact, it's actually quite rubbish. And that's going to be because any CTs with coordination can boost up here and see a lot of middle. You can see I see that player coming out of boil. I could even see that player in mid before, depending on what the smoke's doing. See that player running up diggity or short. And it's going to be pretty easy just to take these players out. I'll leave him there. And that's why that smoke's pretty rubbish. So what we've seen teams do, and this is actually more convenient than running over there, is just find yourself at the edge of these vines here, or whatever you want to call them, the plants. You're just going to aim in between the end of that building and this wall here, do a little walkthrough, and just that one on the go. And you can see, because it lands deeper, so the slanted uh, floor doesn't matter so much, if I stand on my friend's head, I'm just in the smoke. I can jump up, but I can't really see much at all without jumping. So that's a smoke you should be doing. It's more convenient, and use that boost as well if the opponent's using that rubbish jungle smoke. For overpass, we've got those mollies coming out of spawns the CTs to lock off that playground area. So the one most of you probably know is backing into this corner, you're going to find just below this area here. You're going to run forward until say little, you bump up a little bit. You're going to just run over that, run forward a little bit more and let that one go. This one might require a little bit of practice. This is going to be the more standard one. So there's the bump and then I'm going to let that one go with a jump through. You can see that's going to molly off this area here, which most of you have probably seen in play. The T side normally drops a smoke there and rushes through to make sure they can still get control of that playground area. You can pair this, however, with another Molotov and it's going to be running out of spawn. You're going to aim along this line here on the connect entrance and then a little bit above the stairs. So it's going to be lined up a little bit like so. And you're just going to run along the edge of this area here. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Just running forward and letting go just there before you pass this second uh, pillar there. That's going to fly over the top and you can see that's going to Molotov the next part of trying to get the entrance in here towards playground. So players, they don't want to put this one out, they're running through another Molotov, it's up to the T side to decide what they want to do. Or sometimes you'll see teams pair either of these mollies with a grenade coming out of spawn. So the other player, rather than throwing a Molotov, will back into this corner quickly. They'll find these markings on the floor here, aim at this first step, and just run forward a step or two, and throw that grenade. And you can see, that's going to absolutely sack anyone coming through this area. Trying to go fast this way, man, you're going to nade popping above your head. It's going to do a lot of damage. So all those require a little bit of practice, but they're good ways to do damage here and potentially take aggressive control if that's your kind of thing. I realize I'm showing you a couple of jump throughs this episode, so make sure if you don't have a jump bind, just Google CSGO jump bind. The first result should be pretty easy. Just put in your config and you'll have a one. Just press one button and the jump throw will happen. So a couple of smokes on Mirage, also using a jump bind, are going to be for the McDonald's or the Archers area. I got a little bit upset when I said McDonald's last time, this area here. And it's going to be ones you can do straight out of spawn, so you can fake it, go towards A, or it's actually incredibly fast to throw these with some kind of B rush. So the first one's going to be just run to this corner here. You're going to find where these two areas on the wall, the markings on the wall meet, and just aim that little patch above there. And there's going to be using a jump through the first time. And the other side is going to be running just to the left of this pillar here. Make sure you're out wide enough and aim at the top of that building, and you're going to do yet another jump through. And you can see where these are going to land. The first one I threw is going to be for this side here. And here comes the other one. It's going to land on that side, making your B rush or your fake potentially out of spawn a lot more effective. And that's really going to disrupt any players towards B. They're going to be calling for rotations, thinking your team's coming towards this side of the map. So two very useful smokes. That's about it for Mirage. I'm going to keep Vertigo short as I know a lot of you don't play it. It's going to be to do with this ramp area here and this particular position and the way this texture or this part of the map loads in. So interestingly, if you are far enough away, like on this forklift here, you can see I actually can't see anything at all because of how it works. But if I drop this, pick up a scope weapon, I can see through there. But what makes this spot pretty powerful is with a rifle, you can't clear this until you do actually jump up here like that. And at that point there, you can see I can see the player but I'm going to have a massive advantage on this angle because if I remove him, I'm going to be able to sit here, going to find you jumping and just spray you down while you're even midair before you can land. So that's a pretty advantageous position to play as a CT if you can get there. One little thing you can do with the T side to clear this though, is if you actually run all the way back here, you can see it doesn't actually render it at all. So this is an interesting thing to do with how CSGO loads, but you can see I can see him pretty easily. There's no ramp there at all. So that's just a little bit of information for you about Vertigo. Now, it's been a little bit too long without a jump through, so I'm going to be throwing this smoke here from outside T-Con. So you're going to find yourself off to the edge of this massive dumpster as you come out of T-Spawn. You're going to find the start of this building here, come all the way down to reach this first twisty part in the fence, and then just off 
to the right there. And you're going to be using your jump throw once again. And that is what I said before. It's going to be that inside smoke for that Z area. And that could be good for selling a little fake before your team hits this out of bomb site. Now, the other thing I want to talk about was this pre now seed gobby start to do on train. I don't know if anyone else does it, but just come out here at the beginning of the round. Find yourself just above this cylinder, a little bit like this, and just do a little bit of a running throw at the start of a round. And what's this going to do? It's going to land right in the middle of this bomb train. You can see any CTs coming out of spawn and want to go fast, they're going to jump through the middle here. And they're going to get caught off by that. You can do a nice chunk of damage right off the bat. Now, Dust 2 did have me stump for something unique until I went and watched those big demos once again. And it's got a much more interesting way to smoke mid to B on this map, into this corner here, top of that area, run forward, and let go as you saw me did. Again, it's going to be in that jump throw. It's going to be a bit of a theme of this episode. And that's going to be a mid to B smoke. It might look a bit short, but you can see it actually is pretty effective locking that out. So that's going to be an interesting way to do that. And then a smoke for you can do doors. Again, maybe you want to lurk like that Z smoke we talked about on train a second ago. You're going to back yourself up cat. You're going to find when this top of this pillar lines up with that little window there. And if you just aim up that much, run forward and do yet another jump through. You can have a smoke actually bounce all the way around this particular tower and smoke off this door. So maybe your team wants to contact B as you're doing this. You can smoke this area off and then they can just have their guns out as they come out here. Don't have to worry about pulling out a smoke and trying to catch it off guard. Guns up, make sure they're locking out these two entrances into the site. So they're a little bit of smokes, very situational smokes, but two very interesting ones that you might want to use every now and then. Now on Nuke, if you want to go for some kind of ramp hit, it's very important to lock down the rotations of the CT side. So if you want to go towards ramp, maybe a rush being in the round, I know in your pug or something, it can be very useful to use that nade and this molly combo here to stop anyone trying to rotate down the vent. You see my molly missed a little bit, but you get the idea. And it's going to allow you a lot more time to push this ramp player off, run all the way down here and try and hit this bomb site before anyone can rotate down that vent and try and help out towards the doors. That's the option that's pretty obvious. The other one that I saw Team Liquid using, not quite in this way, but with the pistol run strategy actually, is they come out of spawn, break these windows, and they got Naf to sit in this corner, crouch down, find this light, go across to to here. And what this is gonna do is actually gonna smoke off any information from the CT side. So you can see this one's gonna bounce off two parts of the wall, land here, and there's no information the CTs can get as to if anyone's dropping vents, also good for your vent drops, or if they can rotate themselves. Because you think about, say you try and rotate like this, they don't know if you've left the player lurking, maybe back of lobby here, and any time someone tries to rotate down that vent, you're gonna see them come through that smoke, spray them down for an easy kill. So that's a great way to mess with the CT rotations and give yourself a couple of rounds on the T side for this notoriously CT side map. But that is the end. Make sure to like, subscribe if you did enjoy, and I'll catch you all in the next one.